I'd like to call the meeting to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. Adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Board of Adjustment of the Township of Franklin has been provided. Board members, applicants, <laughs> professionals, and members of the public, please speak directly into the microphones so that our recording secretary can properly process minutes. Applicants and professionals, please fill out the sheet on the table when you've completed your testimony. Thank you, and would you call the roll? Uh, Cheryl Bathia? Here. Rich Brokranek? Here. Uh, Joel Reese and Allen Rich asked to be excused. Uh, Gary Rosenthal? Here. Robert Shepard? Here. Basim Verdas? Here. It's working. Elizabeth Clarkin? Here. And Chairman Thomas? Here. Uh, for the regular, for, uh, for the rest of the agenda up to the hearings, I'm going by the agenda on my phone, which was supposed to be, I guess, the updated one. So regular meeting minutes, February 3rd, 2022. We need a motion. I'll move it. Second. Did you Second. want me to mention? Did you want me to mention about Sidad being carried first? Uh, okay, if you want to do it first or after this part of it, uh, it's, does it make a difference? Whatever you want to do. Uh, call the roll on these and then we'll switch down to that. Richard Mechanic? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Here. No, you were voting on the minutes. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Did I call the roll call? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm, that's what I'm I thought. sorry, I'm sleeping. <laughs> we're all yeah. a little rusty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Shepard? Yes. Vasim Verdas? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Okay, skipping down to the uh, last item on the agenda, Sci Data Mandir Incorporated ZBA, 190037. If you're here for that, the preliminary major, final major site plan with C and D variances in which the applicant wants to construct a 28,970 square foot place of worship at 583 South Middle Wish Road, Somerset, Block 36.01, Lot 6.03 in the A zone uh, is not going to be heard this evening. And as soon as I get it back up, it's it will be carried to May 5th. May 5th. With no further notification okay, needed. Okay, that application will be carried to May 5th. No further application. There will be that. That means, if you have any doubt, there's not going to be any letters in the mail for anybody. And this that meeting. Is the notification. That meeting will be held here in person at 7:30 on May 5th. That's that meeting will be here in person. We'll keep our fingers crossed on May 5th. Uh, regular meeting minutes, February 17th, 2022. I'll move it. Second. Cheryl Bethia? Yes. Rich Procant? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. Basim Verdas? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Uh, a resolution, Anita Khan, CBA 21-0023. I'll move. Second. Cheryl Bethia? Yes. Rich Procanic? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. And then uh, Malgor Zada Serafin, ZBA 21 0025. I'll move. Second. Cheryl Bethia? Yes. Richard Procanic? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, moving to the hearing section. One uh, moment before that. Uh, again, I just I wanted to mention at the beginning of the hearing, it's nice to welcome everybody back to the meetings 
in person, much much different, much more efficient uh, than it's been on the computer. I know I'm pretty sure we all look forward to that. First hearing, Cedar Hill Holdings, LLC, actually the only hearing this evening, ZBA 19 0041, the applicant seeking a devariance to allow operation of a summer day camp at 152 Cedar Grove Lane, Somerset, Block 424.12, Lot 6.03 in the R40 zone. Uh, Mr. Lamford, before he uh, can, uh, begins, I'm taking this opportunity again to recuse myself from this hearing. Uh, uh, this is on the advice of Mr. Reagan, our board attorney, uh, in spite of the fact that the applicant's attorney initially voiced no objections to my being part of this hearing. I have not been part of these hearings. I don't intend to be part of the hearings for this application, and I want that publicly understood because there is an avalanche of social media going on around this township, uh, criticizing the actions of this board for permitting me to conduct these hearings and be a part of it. That has not happened, and it's not going to happen. And uh, we'll happily turn the gavel over now to uh, Mr. Shepard, who will be quite capable handling everything also. Thank you. This is my chance to have the gavel. Uh, oh, I'm not going to hammer it. Um, I, uh, I'll now um, uh, turn this over to Mr. Lanfret. Uh Tonight we were uh, supposed to hear from uh, two uh, more witnesses, Elizabeth Dolan and Brian. Kevin O'Brien? Kevin, Kevin O'Brien. Right. And, uh, but I think something else is happening. Yeah, if I may, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and for the record, Peter Lamford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Uh, since our last hearing, which was an aborted hearing, um, we have had numerous uh, meetings with the township staff. It, it was apparent that as a result of the testimony at the hearing concerning the summer camp, that there were serious concerns raised by the township staff uh, and by board members concerning the operation or the handling of uh, the arrival and departure of the uh, camp attendees. In addition, what we were faced with was that we had prepared two traffic reports uh, during the height of the pandemic uh, when we started this application uh, when the numbers were not what the numbers were in 2021. The township conducted a traffic study in August of 2021 which had significantly higher numbers and the numbers are the numbers but it, it, it is apparent that when comparing what the township found as far as operations and what Biz Stolen found are fairly inconsistent are fairly inconsistent uh, with each other because of the pandemic uh, in addition in, in reviewing operations in 2021 uh, the summer camp was still under uh, a protocol where the children were being tested when they came to the site uh, before they can enter the facility, which impacted the traffic. So during our discussion, we, we really felt that all of those reports, while relevant, don't jive with each other. And what we really need to do is come up with some protocols going forward which would hopefully 
uh, deal with the issues that were raised by township staff in their TRC report, were raised by Mr. Mazzi in some of the emails that he forwarded to us, and were, which were also raised by Ms. Dolan in her analysis of the operations. Uh, and what we did was we came up with a driveway operations report, which I would like to mark as... A what kind of report? Dri we call it a driveway operations report. Driveway? Driveway. Driveway, okay. Driveway, yes. Uh, operations report. And I will mark that as A1, if that's okay with Mr. Reagan. Date. And today's date. Yeah. Now, Mr. Lanford, before you go any further, um, I, I would like to make sure uh, that the applicant, Mr. G-A-L-E-N Smith, is here, as well as um, uh, Nen Menon. They are both here, as well as Ms. Dolan. I saw Ms. Dolan, okay. I think I see Nen, but I don't see Mr. Smith. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, I see why I don't see him. There's a big guy sitting in front of you. In addition to the report, there was also the question raised by Mr. Reagan at the previous, previous hearing concerning uh, whether we had the ability to use the swim club parking lot for our operations, which are also relevant in this report. Uh, we provided a lease for last year's uh, use of the swim club facility and I am now going to mark as A2 in evidence the lease with the figures redacted. And I don't think I need to circulate it, but there is a lease in place for the use of the swim club for this coming year. If Thank any you. of the board members want to see it, I do have extra copies, but I will give the, the one to Mr. Reagan. Mr. Lanfret, is the is the l latest agreement uh, the same as the one from 2021? It is essentially the same. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. With the same cost? Excuse me. With the same fees? I, I don't. I for the rental. Yeah. I don't think that is relevant to you know it's between the swim club and, and the school as to what they're paying is. That's, I, I, I would agree with that, yes. Okay. Uh, in going through this, uh, and, and like I said, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we spent at least two or three conversa uh, times with conferences with staff, and I had numerous conferences with the uh, summer camp operators and Nan Menon, who was is the operator of the school, and we also, in trying to come up with a protocol, uh, tried to take advantage of the individuals who operate and run the school, uh, the principal and other people, uh, because there has not been a problem with the day-to-day -day operations of the school. Um, in coming up with these protocols, a couple of things uh, were very important. Uh, and I will just sort of highlight them unless the board wants to have Ms. Dolan review them. And if, if, if you do, I can call her up here and she can review the protocols that are in her report. But in, in essence, we, we felt that the first thing that needed to be done was to educate the parents of the attendees uh, about the arrival and 
drop off and the pick up and drop uh, pick up and departure of the children. Uh, although and it, it was on the website for the previous hearing, uh, the camp brochure dealt with the issue. We felt it needed to be dealt with uh, more clearly uh, and to also at the beginning of camp reinforce uh, to the parents what the procedures are for uh, pick up and drop off. The second thing that we felt was very important, and I'm sort of trying to highlight the report, is to stagger the pickup and drop off of the children. The primary pickup time, uh, there are some early drop offs and some later drop offs, which are not the big problem. The big problem was that the bulk of the children came between eight and nine with no assigned times. Exactly. Okay. So what we decided to do was to divide the pickup, or I'm sorry, the drop off of the children uh, with a certain group coming between 8 and 8.30 and another group coming between 8.30 and 9 so we don't hopefully have one big rush of children at the same time. Uh, obviously, we also have to work out where some parents have two, two uh, children or three children that belong in different categories and we will work out at what time those children come. We also try to define where the children are dropped off so it is clear and we can have a free flow of moving traffic on the site. Another thing that we agreed to do and look into, uh, which may or may not be necessary, is to find a bus hub. In other words, to find a site off, pro off the campus where parents can drop off the children and then can be bused into the campus, so that would reduce the number of parents that are coming to the site. Uh, we are looking into that, and that will be part of our evaluation as to whether it, it becomes imp absolutely necessary or optional, and, and we may still want to do it. The other major uh, component is that we are going to have a individual, uh, and we've been in touch with the police department already, to be there every morning, all day, for the first month of the school year, uh, or the summer camp year, to monitor and to help control and direct traffic. Uh, he is not going to direct traffic on Cedar Grove Lane, but he is going to direct traffic at the driveways to make sure that the, the parents are going into the proper driveway. If one of the driveways, which is the school, the school driveway, which is the main driveway, is backed up. They can direct the parents to drop the children off in the other driveway to keep the uh, traffic moving. The other issue that came up was uh, that there are some parents that chose not to follow directional signs, and having an officer there, I think, will ameliorate that situation. Uh, the other issue that came up in the testimony is that it, evidently some parents of children who worked there, uh, the teenagers, would stop and drop their children off on the street and have them walk up, which is, doesn't make sense. So by having an officer there, we can eliminate all of those problems. The other thing that was critical, too, is we needed to evaluate whether these things work whether there should be adjustments to these protocols. And what we agreed to do was to have uh, new traffic counts done after the third or fourth, during the third or fourth week of the summer camp. Uh, usually the first two weeks where people are coming in, things are usually as they are when you start school are a little bit hectic. So we want to get everybody into the right routine, but then to do counts and to do an analysis. Uh, we would conduct the traffic counts. Uh, we would advise the township when the traffic counts were going to be conducted so that if they wanted to be present, they can be present. Um, and then based on those analysis, uh, we can evaluate if things are working. If they're not working, what needs to be you know, changed. And it may be that things are working, but there are other improvements that can be implemented. We also agreed to have uh, some drone flight videos done of the operation so that we can have, or the board can have, the ability to see what is going on there. And by doing that, I, I think we are 
addressing what I perceive to be the major concern that this board had at the, at the hearing. Uh, I think all of these protocols, by putting them in place, will you know, regulate traffic on the property so that it will flow efficiently. After we do that, then we will come back here and have the board, you know, review the reports, review the comments of and suggestions of either Ms. Dolan or Mr. Mazzi or Mr. Healy or whoever, and then we can sort of wrap this thing up in, in finally. But I think to try to wrap it up now with information that probably is not exact uh, probably doesn't make sense. It's not in the best interest of the school, it's not in, or the summer camp, and it's not in the best interest of the board. So I would hope that what we can do and the board would consider is to entertain a request for a temporary use permit rather than the use variance, which would allow us to continue to operate while we go through this process uh, as a condition of the temporary use permit we would have to adhere to the protocols here uh, and agree to come back to the board uh, at a date to be determined by uh, Mr. Healy so that we can wrap this thing up. Uh, Ms. Dolan is here. If, she, if anybody has any questions of her, I, I'm sure as I was babbling on, most of you were reading the report and not listening to me, but that's okay. Uh, but we would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. The, the let me say this based upon the testimony that I've listened to and the situation that I witnessed when I went over there um, I think it is a tribute to Mr. Smith that no one's been injured in that parking lot. Um, and I, I see the, the protocol issues that you are focusing on, and I think they're the right ones. My problem is this. I think Alan Smith is a pretty capable guy. I also think that Nen is also a very capable person. My concern is that um, for a long-term solution, um, my concern is going to be what happens when Galen Smith passes this on to somebody else and they're not as squared away. That's going to leave me with a, a use variance in place that is going to really turn out to be a problem for the town um, to to deal with. So, so what I I what I'm going to be looking for, I think, at the end of all this, is uh, protocols which can be can be. I want to say quantified, but that's not even the right word. They got to be. They got to be things that people that aren't as smart as Gail and Smith uh, are going to be able to deal with, so that we don't create a problem downstream. Well, I, I think by establishing the protocols and, and making them a condition of approval, it, then it is incumbent upon whoever is operating this facility. To, to comply with those conditions of approval. If they don't, they could be subject to summonses or they can be subject uh, to somebody bringing a cause of action because they are not complying with the conditions of approval that were imposed by this board. It's just like if, if the uh, a building... Take one of your cases, another one of your no, cases. No, no, my, my clients don't do anything like that. You know that. Uh, <laughs> Now, it, it, it's just like if, if a building has an occupancy limit and, you know, and it's violated. Uh, it's supposed to be 200 people in the building and then, you know, somebody shows up and there's 300 people in the building. There are remedies for that, including summonses, fines, and perhaps even stopping the operation, depending if it's, if it's a constant violation. So there are mechanisms for the enforcement of these conditions which may be these conditions or may be different conditions as we go through this process. But I think that if the board were to act favorably on the ultimate request of the use variance, the board should impose all of the conditions that would be generated as a result of these studies 
as, re as a result of the recommendations of uh, Ms. Dolan and Mr. Mazzi in collaboration with the township staff and in collaboration with my client. Okay. If, does anybody else, I, I mean, I feel like I'm hogging this, the stage here. Does anybody else have any things that they want to say to Mr. Lanford at this point? I just and want to ask him any questions or have Ms. Dolan talk? Do we want to have her get up and, and, and read the memo or explain, explain the memo further? I don't think we need that. But I, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering whether there's anyone here uh, on the on the board that has questions or comments for Mr. Lanford at this point. I do. I, I just want to clarify. So, Mr. Lanford, are you asking for this evening to have a temporary measure put in place so that you can uh, collect data for for these? proposed procedures I, I just want to be clear on that what, what your ordinance allows is that this board can grant what is known as a temporary use variance for a period of up to six months which would take us through the summer camp and that temporary use variance would expire after the six months during that time we will collect the data we will have further discussions with staff and then we will come back here to continue our application for the permanent use variant. So we're not asking. Phoenix, it will rise from the ashes, yes. So we, we will come back to ask for the permanent use variance. This gets the summer camp running this summer. It, it gets the, everybody the opportunity, you know, God willing that we don't have any of these COVID issues, that we can see it run the way it should normally be operated so we can evaluate all of the, all of the uh, concerns about pickup and drop off. Okay. So uh, I have a few questions, but I think um, I think I'd like to have Darren. If you have any comments on uh, what they've, you've had a chance to review this driveway plan. Did you have any comments or or questions? Um, well, the first question I would have is: I know the applicant's willing to do counts. I just want to get on the record. Would the counts be for both driveways or just the school? We, if we're using both driveways, it would have to be for both driveways. That's the only way it would make sense. Okay. Uh, my next question, oxy loads did come up. I don't know the occupancy of the school, but does the camper, does the camp exceed that or? No, the, the school, when it received its approval, uh, had a maximum occupancy of 330 students. Uh, based on the testimony of Nan and also of, of, of Mr. Smith, uh, the numbers at the summer camp, and again, non-pandemic, uh, average between 250 and 280. And again, summer camp is different because some weeks, you know, there's more kids in, in the camp than other weeks. Parents don't necessarily send their kids to the camp the entire summer. So the number fluctuates, but it's in the 250 to 280 range. So if, if this board was to approve this temporary use, you would agree to a limit of 280? That there would be no problem. Okay. And you could provide some type of documentation that demonstrates that? We can provide the enrollment uh, for each week. We can provide that information. I would want to see that because um, um, I, I felt that that was somewhat vague uh, during the testimony. There were no nothing to support anything so i would be i would look forward to that we would we'd be happy to do that i hijacked it darren you want to you have sure. any more um <laughs> let me just say i had one more note here bear with me so i understand the report and where we're going with it i guess one option i would like to bring out there too is and i believe mr healy will speak to it as well if during the first week or two the police officer on site notices on safe conditions, there's the possibility that we would want this application to at least come to the TRC to work out an immediate issue. I, I agree. I mean, that, that's the intent of this, is to try to make sure everything works smoothly. And if there are problems, I, I don't think we have to wait for week three or four for somebody to pick up the phone and say, hey, we got an issue. Uh, the police officer that's there should be no you should contact either Mr. Healy or, or, or you, Darren, and say, we got a problem, this is the problem, and then we'll have to figure out how to address it. 
I, yeah, that's I, the whole intent of this is to try to come up with protocols that work. Yeah, and I would think, again, if the board was inclined, I think you know, a wording of a condition that they need to fine-tune the plan with the TRC, Technical Review Committee, which includes the Bureau of Traffic Safety uh, of the Police Department, um, and that they would be, you know, frankly, working with staff as the, as the summer goes on. If there are some adjustments that need to be made, the police department obviously should have that. I think it goes without saying, should be able to have the ability to tell them that they need to modify some of their procedures. Um, I'm not saying it would come to this, but in the absolute worst case scenario, if conditions are unsafe, the Bureau of Traffic Safety can say, you need to shut down if, if, if it's untenable. Um, so I, I think something along those lines, again, if the board is inclined, should be in the condition. Since uh, uh, this is really an unusual re request, because I've been on this board a long time, I would I'd like to hear from our uh, attorney if this is a workable situation. In terms of the temporary use permit, yes. I mean, it, it is provided for in the township's ordinance. Uh, it does authorize the zoning board uh, to to grant such a, a use a temporary use permit, uh, and I think you know based on the conditions that have been proposed so far, um, I think it's I think it's workable. Okay, and I have two other questions. Um, and the one I, I did bring this uh, to your attention to give you the opportunity to try to answer it. And the one question I know you you know what that question is going to be. Um, Verizon is putting a cell tower on the swim club parking lot. Condition of that approval is they need to remove some of those parking spaces. Right. Do you know the timing of when that work might start? We, we were in touch with the swim club. There was a representative here this evening. Their agreement with Verizon is that none of their work will happen during the summer. So the construction of that tower uh, will not impact what we're doing because they're not allowed to do construction during the summer. Okay. Because obviously it impacts the swim club also. Okay. Um, again, I would say that if, I mean, if, 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 the, if for whatever reason construction starts, that we're going to have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. If, again, if the unforeseen, you know, if, if what. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if there's a problem on, on Cedar Grove Lane that's unforeseen at the road buckles, we have to talk. I, I mean, obviously, well, yeah. common I mean, sense I, is that if there's a problem, we have to address it and talk yeah. about it. It's April right now. If all of a sudden Verizon starts showing up with trucks in August, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last question, again, this was, you know, one of the other, you know, we've been talking about traffic, but one of the other issues that had been raised by some members of the public was the amplified sound, the DJ. Um, you stole my question. Keep um, going. Just, it was one of the, well, I'm just offering that as a, I guess, as a general question to, if that's something that the board wants to consider as a condition and what the applicant's response to that might be. I, if you want me to respond. I do. Okay. Uh, I do. Okay. Uh, we are aware of and that there were a couple of complaints with regards to noise which were addressed. Uh, I think that sound amplification with kids in a summer camp is something that's fairly common. Uh, I also think that since this property is in a residential zone, that the operator and the individuals who, the employees, have to be sensitive to the fact that we are in a residential zone. Uh, I think that based on what they have heard last year when the complaint was raised and he, what they have heard here now is that they have to be very cognizant of the fact that while they, if they are allowed to use amplification, it can't be used to the extent that it imposes uh, a burden on or a distraction to the residents. And I think those things can be done. Uh, there are, again, also statutes that involve noise. Uh, and I, I don't want to talk about you know, what they are and whether you know the noise that came out of that facility on a given day violated a statute or didn't. This is a s situation of neighbors trying to get along. That's right. And, and so I would think that, that 
if we would like to continue this sound amplification because I think it's appropriate, but I also know that if there is a problem with that, that goes on to the issue of the overall use variance and may impact uh, that approval, and I think my client is aware of it and the operator is aware of it. And I, I think that that's the way, the way why I want to approach it. I want, I, that's why I asked if, if the applicant was in the audience tonight, because I, I wanted him to be part of this conversation. And my, my thinking is that um, we don't want to, we don't want to impose a condition now because that all gets into statute rather than neighbors. And I would much rather uh, see him being judicious in the application of, of um, amplification. But we'll, we'll see where all that goes. I, I, I don't think we want to have anything included in there other than maybe something that it would be reasonable. And, and I, I think it's clear that we've got the message and, and we understand the message. Uh, so hopefully when we come back, that's not an issue. Yeah, good. N now, I, I think everybody on the board has had a chance to ask questions as are our professionals. Um, my question is, is there anyone in the audience that would like to get up and say something about this application and how they feel about it that is opposed to it. I don't need to have people come up and, and do a little cheerleading for this. I just want to find out if there are people in the audience that have concerns that have not been addressed at this point. OK, well, then we've come to it. Yes. Please come up to the microphone and speak directly into it. Can you just raise your hand first and yes, you swear sir. that any testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing Amen. but the truth? Amen. If you could just provide your name and address. Okay. Dennis Saclari, 151 Cedar Grove Lane. Yeah, speak right here. Uh, I live directly across from the uh, school. I've never come before this board to complain. But I can tell you, over the past several summers with that summer camp running, it, it, it absolutely creates quality of life issues with the noise that comes out of that camp. With the, with the way the kids are monitored. Everything's, all the activities, most of the activities are done up in front of the school, not behind the school. So it absolutely adversely impacts the quality of life for the neighborhood. Two, on any given day, traffic is an issue. Traffic is problematic. I can never, if I want to go out in the morning because of the way the traffic queues to make their left hand turns into the school, I can't make a left turn out of my driveway. It's totally unsafe. And that can, that, that's now going to continue, not only during the school year, but it's going to continue throughout the year for me. So when I want to get out of my driveway in the morning to be safe, I have to make a right-hand turn and navigate around Western Road, down Elizabeth Avenue, and back out to Eastern Avenue. If I'm coming up heading north in the afternoon on, on Cedar Grove Lane, and I want to make a left-hand turn into my driveway, that becomes a nightmare because even if someone, because the traffic queues again, and if someone wants to give me the opportunity and be courteous to turn into my driveway, people are obnoxious and go around and come through the, the, uh, the uh, safety lane there that's uh, at, set at the foot of my driveway. And there's been several times where I've almost been broadsided because people don't have the patience. So I think traffic has to clearly be monitored uh, and watched. Someone has, has to definitely facilitate getting traffic in and out of that driveway, and it has to prevent people making you know, wrong turns into traffic coming out of that parking lot. And my other concern is when they start construction in the swim club, what happens to all that excess traffic or all the parking or, or the drop-off? Drop How's that going to be addressed? I think that that's something that that they are going to be f focusing on as uh, time goes on here. Um, I think that's not something that we can uh, clairvoyantly resolve at this point. You know, and just to say this, you know, I've never been before the sport, but it has definitely become a quality of life issue, especially in the summer. And there was one night, you know, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, where they had activities at that school, and they had 
kids running out unsupervised at 1 o'clock in the morning where I had to call the police to come in. I don't want that going on. And what, has, what goes on there should be clearly monitored. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, if I can just ask, sir, sir, just one question. When you mentioned the noise, is it is it the sound of the children and or is it is it the amplified sound and or the DJ? What what? It's everything, Mark. It's you know, it's all the activities for me. Living on Cedar Grove Lane and the way people navigate Cedar Grove Lane, having all those activities up front as a life safety issue for having kids so close to the road and having activities up there. Everything should be taking place behind that school. So, okay. so the noise is very intrusive. I never complain. I never come before the board. I'm adversely impacted. I know kids have to live and enjoy and be happy. But there has to be some control and people have to be mindful of the neighbors also. So, so the reason I'm asking that question is, Kids are, going to, kids are going to be kids, so and absolutely. I so agree. if kids are going to yell while they're playing, they're going to yell. But things like somebody's with a bullhorn versus yeah. somebody with a, with a PA system playing music. Absolutely, those are things that potentially the board could right. talk about. So you're, you're saying you've heard all, th all, all, all of all, all the above. Okay. Again, I live right across the street. So right. and again, I'm not trying to be obnoxious about this. There's got to be a fair balance. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have anything that they'd like to say or add? Yes, why don't you come up? No, no, Please you have to on. speak from there, regardless of what you're going to say. We have to get your name and address. And if you could just raise your right hand before you, do you swear any testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I and do. And if you just need name and address, please. My name is, is this on? Can you hear me? My name is Deirdre Austin, 378 Bowler Court, Piscataway, New Jersey. Now, I'm not on the opposing team, I guess, if you wanted to make teams, but I do work at the camp. I am the assistant director, and I am totally confused because safety is not Frank, an issue. It has she, never she's been She's employed an issue. by the, by the yeah, camp. I, 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 yeah, I don't know because I wasn't at the last one, yeah. so, but I can't have... If she's a camp representative, then either I'm going to need to call her as a witness or... Yeah, so I don't think she should... decide what you want to do. Yeah, I, I think it's probably not necessary to have her speak at this point. Yeah, as an employee so, of the applicant... Okay. Any, any testimony, so statements So when need we to be have made. the gentleman with no, your no, friend no, over no, here... No, 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 no. Vince, so, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Vince. I can stop, but you can speak to me a certain way. Before yeah. you proceed, if because you're employed by the applicant, I understand. Any testimony needs to be presented through the, no the applicant's problem. attorney. No okay. problem. Thank you. And, and just to, if I could clarify, I think for, for, for the reason for what the chairman was suggesting, I think the board can see that there are folks here in support of the camp, and we've had applications in the past where it's just one person after another saying this is, you're here, the board can see that you're here in support of the camp, so we, you know, we don't need, we don't need person after person saying it's a wonderful camp, that doesn't help. If there are some additional things that the board needs to think about to make an informed decision, that's what the board needs. Yes, ma'am, that's standing up in the back there. Yes, come up and, right. Do you swear any testimony about the giveaway, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Name and address, please. I'm Tara Jordan McKenney, 115 Dunham's Corner Road, East Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, I'm a parent, a Rutgers alumni, and I work in air, Coke Pub, all of J&J, &J, so I've seen the traffic up and down that road for years. Um, I have two sons that are now be 10 to 13 who've been in the camp for many years. And I want to go back to the comment about the summer of 2021. The first three weeks, I will say it was cumbersome because they were taking the temperature of the kids. But I have to admit the owner of the camp realized that and immediately made the changes where there was no traffic issues um, at all. And I have to be honest with you, I'm the type of parent who's with my laptop, my headset, I'm conducting global meetings in my car sometimes because I'm, you know, I'm pressed for time having meetings in India, China, wherever around the world for the work that I do. And I can sit in that parking lot and I can have a conversation where I don't hear the kids' noise. I don't hear the amplified music. And I work for a Fortune 500 company. Um, and no one's hearing that sound. And my windows are absolutely down. 
during the time of those first three weeks of the summer 21 from June to the first week of July, there was traffic inside the school, but the traffic was not on the road. The traffic on that road gets crazy based on the intersection of Route 18 and 287. If Route 18 is backed up for any reason, whether it's university or because of the rain, weather issues, constructions by the university, and also vice versa on 287 going north and south, all the roads on East Avenue and the supporting roads will always be flooded full of congested traffic. It is not the school. Um, I go down that road sometimes to do a crossway to be going to go to work, and most of the times, 9 times out of 10, I'm at work by 8.30, 8.45 the latest, especially during the summer times. I'm there arriving there between 8.30. I may sit in the parking lot at 10 o'clock, uh, 10 a.m. In, in the morning, and sometimes I'll arrive at 3 o'clock and sit in the parking lot on calls doing my work to about 5 o'clock. The amplification of the music is not loud. If you go in the back of the school, you will hear it, but you're not hearing it to the point where it's all over. You can hear it down to the Starbucks and down the, you know, not even a quarter of a mile down the road. I think the camp has, uh, um, really has uh, understanding of what it is to keep everything contained. In regards to the children who do play at the camp, they're the ages of three, four, five, seven, up to eight years old at the front who are playing a little bit of a kickball. So you will hear laughters of the children. The older kids are in the back or they're in the area playing basketball. And nine times out of 10, the children are, are coming from school trips. And by the time the kids come from school trips, the parents are waiting to pick them up and they go home. In regards to the comment about the 1 um, a.m., one time during the summer, the kids who are between 7th uh, and 8th grade are allowed to spend the night at the camp mm. with parent supervisions, mm. with adult supervisions, and their pickup is at 12 o'clock. I'm not sure 1 o'clock comes into play because mo everything is evacuated and done and cleaned up, but it's one time a year. Okay, we get it. Thank you. You're I, welcome. Wanna, I just want to be truthful about that. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Okay. I think we've had enough participation by the audience. So really, the question that I have, I'm going to ask my attorney this, is what do we do next? Where do we go? Are, are we going to, do we have something to, we don't have a resolution. Um, do we simply adjourn for the evening and then have a, uh, have a, um, a resolution prepared based upon, I think maybe what we have to do is, is vote on whether or not we want to allow this. Correct. It would be, okay. it would be as any other application that's before the board. Um, once you've, you know, exhausted your discussion with regards to, to what's been presented by the applicant, uh, I think it's appropriate for you to, uh, you know, make a decision and based on everything that the testimony uh, and statements from, from Mr. Lanfrey tonight, as well as staff and, and board members. Um, I've got a whole list of conditions that obviously, depending upon which way it goes, uh, would be reflected in a, in a resolution. Okay. Um, does anyone want to make a, um, a resolution? Uh, then I'll make one. Um, I move that we grant uh, the applicant, um, Cedar Hill uh, Prep Summer Camp. That's not the right name. Uh, Cedar Hill Holdings, um, a uh, temporary uh, use uh, Permit. Permit um, that will reflect the uh, terms and conditions set forth in the um, uh, the driveway operations report for Cedar Hill Summer Camp, as well as the um, additional terms and conditions discussed here this evening all of which shall be laid out in the resolution uh, deep to be prepared by uh, council for the uh, zoning board. 
No, no, just that's it, unless somebody thinks we should add something else to that. Does anybody have any, any further comments on that? Mark, what do you think? I, mean, I think you covered it generally. Um, Frank will prepare the um, draft resolution and um, for your memorialization at another meeting. Yep. Okay. I think I need a second. Yes, I need a second if we get a second. I'll second. Taro Vathia? Yes. Richard Prokanik? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? I'm going to vote no. Robert Shepard? Yes. Basim Verdas? Yes. And uh, Jean Clark Elizabeth Clarkin, sorry, your proper name. Yes. Thank you very much. I also think that since tonight was also the scheduled hearing for the underlying application for the site plan, we ought to carry that application. I will grant the board an extension of time. And when we decide to rehear the underlying, I'm sorry, not site plan, use fairness application, we will then re-notice for that so that everybody will get the appropriate notice. And I might suggest that we try to do that as early as possible, maybe in the fall, so we're not we're not backed up against uh, summer I, schedule again. I, I, again, I'm hoping that we can get all of our work done within the first month of the camp, get everything to the town quickly thereafter, and then and they get scheduled to try to resolve that. So just to be so through September, to, to, for the uh, extension of time. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll give it to you in writing. All right, thank you. Well, that's all the business we have for tonight. Um, I'm going to move that we adjourn. Oh, no, wait. We have an executive oh, yeah. session. Oh, we do? Very brief. All right.